Hey. So I made a metal detector supposedly. Not actually, it's just um, I put the, the speaker, the tweeter, there. And it was on the negative and then the positive. I found out that they were all positives except for the last one was the negative. So I put a speaker across it like the guy did on the YouTube web page. And then I, first I uh, used this arc generator, which is um, pretty much a plasma generator. And I used it to find out which of the electrodes was the strongest, highest voltagest. And that would be the negative, and it was so it was the very one underneath on the right. Well, this is a flyback generator thingy. Okay, so what what happened was, um, I supplied it with, as you can see, two nine volt batteries in the series, and I made the cord bounce back on itself so that it would. You know, be the negative and the positive as a, a loop. You know, so that this this the power would go into because nine nine's eighteen and this takes twelve volts. So what I did was I put the positive and the negatives. I found out which are the positive and negatives by arcing them, and um, the ones that with the highest voltages was clearly the negative. Uh, but that's connected to this positive one that comes out of the thingy, we call it. So that became the negative because it was the most highest voltage. And then I arced it the other way, and I found out that uh, one that's the zero, and it's the one that's of the very right of all the pins. So that became the zero, so that's how you know which is the zero. And then... From there, I noticed that they were arcing off the others to try to find a f sound frequency. So what I did was I um, arced until... So I made... Um, I knew that there was a capacitor in here somewhere. And I had positive... I put the positives... The, the power supply at this end. Um, and the speaker end at that end. And then what I did was... I tested for the change in frequency around the pins. Now they were in series, but I unsoldered that. And then I tested, and I found out that the second pin is the one what's wired clipped onto. And that was, I've got a capacitor to go through just to see if that would do anything. kind of does. Um, weird thing is my positive side became a negative side for some reason. But my capacitor... Either way, it's going to work. Um, but, you know, it's quite a high voltage one. So it's kind of like a place for it to go. And then I found out that um, it, it did, in fact, have a capacitor in it because it was tweeting. And what it was was the capacitor's frequency, which was already in, um, in the circuit, was causing the, the looping tweet. So that was all fine with me. But, I mean, it wasn't working with ordinary electricity. And I was told that um, if you get a couple of, couple of wires and wrap them around this thing here, it'll become high voltage. But I didn't really give a fuck about high voltage because I just wanted to get on with having something going into it, coming out of the speaker, so that I could hear anything coming out of the speaker. I just wanted to hear anything come out of the speaker. So there's a little wee tweeter speaker because I had bigger ones with too much voltage and I had to put high voltage through and I don't really want to do that. Don't really want to handle high voltage. All I want to do is get a tweet. Okay, so the moral of the story is um, it does tweet. And I put copper. I was touching this part here. And what happened was I was getting zapped when it was 12 volts. But for some reason, it's the batteries got flatter, which made it more handleable. And I touched this one here. After, and um, it turned out that that was the positive number one. And usually goes nowhere but only into the first of the positive circuit. Much like a 555 IC chip. Mm, it made a tweeting noise, like a bird. So, as long as this battery thing is on it properly. Oh boy, it's falling the bits. 
So I'll get the battery back together. Just hook clip it on. Um, down here you can't really see. I've got to clip it on. Now, one weird thing was it was more of a proximity detector or than anything. Now, why has it been a bastard when um, I'm trying to show people? Crazy, eh? So there's negative, there's a grey line that's on this. You can see it kind of big. Oh, yeah, it's coming out of the bottom. But anyway, that's more to do with the tuning line. And I noticed that it was very low voltage when you arc through it. You seem to arc through it. And it's connected to these dialing knobs, so I turned them all clockwise like the man said to make maximum power. But it didn't seem to give any voltage really through there. Uh, but this red one was clearly more, sh more positive, and this one through the middle is actually a negative and very strong, and the negative is linked to the very clockwise one um, pin. So... I was happy to know it was just positive, which is negative at whatever end, um, and identify them by soldering certain ones to certain ones, knowing that that's, I know that which is positive and I know which is negative, so I know which is the most conductive and which works the best with sound as well. So I found out that they're all, each pin is actually a transformer coil, and the second or third one, they both make a tweet sound. And if I touch at any time with anything, even put copper on it, with that first one, um, it tweets. So that's pretty much what a metal detector does. What it is, is it seeks earth. Because this here is an um, arc generator kind of plasma generator coil thing with only one wire going out of it and out of the middle. And it's a Tesla coil kind of thing. It will cause lightning and it will, um, you just send the lightning into the machine and you pick which you want, positive or negative, whichever it goes into. But as long as you find out how to make the arc influence the speaker. Once you've got that, then it's just a matter of figuring out how to pick a pin that makes the loudest tweeting. Once you've got that, then what you got to do is find out what pin gets affected by motion. And so what I found out was that the positive and negative joining wires, where I joined them, their joins is um, where it cuts off if it's influenced by metal, because the circuit's electrolytic anyway. But uh, another thing I found out, which is very cool, is um, I wanted to find out how the fuck... Do you make it whistle when something goes near it? Um, something electrolytic, because it seeks the earth, you see? What it is, is the voltage circuit, and it's striving to go to earth. Now, if it goes past a thing that's in the ground, it's wanting to lightning arc, it's straight to that middle thing. And at the same time, it has an influence from that voltage that it's trying to send. It's, it's always, lightning's always seeking earth. So a metal detector is like a lightning design creature thing that uh, has to hit the earth. And so this is what I did. I used my lightning machine. I hooked it up to a high voltage system. I found out what the um, metal detector they make. Found out also from a high voltage point of view how you can make the speaker on and how you can make the... Um, determine which are the high voltage positives and negatives, I'll find out how to determine that. I did all that, and yeah, it does work. And um, it's kind of a motion sensor as well, so if you go near it, it'll go off, and if you touch anything or go metal in any way towards it, it'll sound off. So yeah, it's a scanner as well. I can change it into a scanner. So that's pretty freaky. I invented a proximity switch that is lightning 
I can fire lightning at people if they walk into my flat at certain places I don't want them to go. It's uh, it's safe because it's low voltage. But had I had put it on um, a step up unit, it could disintegrate a human on contact. Anywhere in proximity, in the proximity bubble distance, of depending on what voltage you put through it, like those video games where you have a tower that can fire lightning at people, it's it's a simplified version of that. If planes came by to invade our country, one of those could wipe out the plane, blow them up. So yeah, it's just a test of coil that seeks the earth. That's all it is. It's just got a speaker to tell that there's anything in its proximity. That's all. Simple, right? Cool.